I wasted 23 years of my life playing video games. And it's not like I'm regretting of that, but I have to grow up. So, yes, it is finally time to leave the video games aside and get a proper job. Nah, fuck it, let's just act like a video game character. I'm too young to get a job after all. Sup guys, Carlos here. After almost two months without uploading a single video, I'm sorry by the way, I'm ready to make my comeback to YouTube by talking about one of the video game series with the most interesting protagonist, Team Megami Tensei. If you already know this series, or at least watch one of these videos made by me, you probably know that every protagonist of the mainline games has suffered horrible experience. From seeing your best friends die, to kill your best friends for not having the same goals and visions for the world. So the tough for making a small analysis to every mainline hero to see which one had the most miserable life became a reality. But why just the mainline protagonist? Simple, recently I finished Shin Megami Tensei 2 and 4 Apocalypse and making an analysis to every SMT character ever made is too much, even for a person with no social life like me. However, if this video gets decent views, 1k views for example, I will do the same with the Persona and Shin Megami Tensei pinup heroes. This series is well known for having multiple endings for each main character. To make this simple for me, I will add some rules for this video. Number 1. I will only talk about the events that happen in every game and DLC if it's necessary, which means mangas and drama CDs won't be considered. Number 2. Instead of visiting each protagonist by release date, I will start from Shin Megami Tensei 5 to Shin Megami Tensei 1. But why? To be honest, I don't know. I thought it might be interesting to start with the newest game to the game that not many people played yet. Number 3. I'm sure you saw this guy on the thumbnail before clicking this video. To add more tragic events for one of the protagonists here, I decided to include Nanachi from Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse to the list, alongside the new events that happened in that game. I almost forgot the most important thing of this video. Big shoutouts to the master behind this video. Boof. Meister, who let me use all of his footage from SMT1 to SMT5. Thank you so much man, you saved me a lot of work. One last thing that you probably expected at this point, this video will contain spoilers of the entire mainland games, be aware of that. With the rules set and done, it's time to find out which character has the most miserable life ever. Corruption. Tina Hobino, man. What an interesting take for a mainline protagonist. Unlike the others, which are humans with extraordinary strength, controlled by a god, or cursed with demon powers, Tina Hobino is the first one in the series that straight up became a god at the very beginning of the game by fusing with Aogami. However, that doesn't mean he had an easy and quiet life by doing so. To get started, he is the most profound protagonist from the mainline series. Don't ask me how I discovered that fact. He and his friends were dragged to a post-apocalyptic world where there is a constant conflict between angels and demons. In order to survive, he had to fuse with someone who barely knew 10 seconds ago or he would be killed by the hands of demons. Thank god Aogami was the best character in the game. On his journey for answers, he found out the world he was exploring all this time was in fact the true Tokyo that fell 28 years ago. And the Tokyo where he was living peacefully was an illusion made by God before its death. Everyone wants him dead, even his own allies for being the biggest sin God has created. One of his friends sacrificed herself to revive him and Aogami. He killed three of his friends, Sahori for being controlled by a demon and Ichiro Dasai and Yusuru Atsuta for not sharing the same goal for the recreation of a new world. If we take the freedom ending as the canon one, he creates a world where only human exists, banishing every demon and god from it. But the creation of this world caused the death of his best ally, partner and friend, Aogami. And finally, after creating this world with no demons, he ironically became a god to continue protecting it from demons or other gods who might try to take it by force. In his attempt to keep the world like it was before, he created a clone of himself with no power and thus he became in a solitary god who no one knows his existence. That was definitely a solid start. Before making this video I seriously thought he didn't suffer like the protagonist I'm about to mention. But 
Will this be enough to be the protagonist with the most horrible and miserable life? Only time will tell. See? Nanachi is a 15 years old kid who became part of the Shin Megami Tensei Force event after causing a national disaster which I'll mention later. He is the second mainline protagonist who got an edgier look compared to the others. Let us see if this look is the only horrible thing he had to suffer. The first and most important fact about Nanachi is the fact that he is the protagonist of the most hated mainline SMT game. Many fans really hate this game because of its different take on the mainline games. Instead of being extremely edgy or depressing like the other games, this one took elements like friendship and love and were introduced in the story, which is very different compared to the only mainline SMTs. Nanachi was found as a baby at the Sky Tower, completely alone with no sign of his parents. His whole life was a non-pacific one. He had to deal with death, demons and pure chaos because of the current situation in Tokyo. During his counter training, his two mentors were assassinated by demons and he sacrificed himself to protect his best friend. That's right, Nanachi fucking dies after 20 minutes of gameplay. He made a contract with a god to possess his body in order to go back to the world of the living. This god called Dak Dak controls him like a puppet during a big part of the game. Nanachi and his best friend try so hard to help him that were tricked by Odin to release the leader of the divine powers from his prison, who alongside Odin, Maitreya and Shisha killed grand part of the population of Tokyo. Hell, they try so hard to help him that was captured by the divine powers because of them. Krishna reveals the truth to Nanachi's friends about how he escaped from his seal, leaving a feeling of untrust toward the protagonist. The people of Tokyo tried to kill him and Asahi for releasing Krishna. Nanachi also lost what is considered the closest thing to a dad, which is also Asahi's father, who gave his life to protect her daughter. During part of the mid-game, he and his friends accepted the mission to defeat Chisha, a giant snake with the power of creating a new universe after getting enough souls. They defeated it twice, but later on it is revealed that Shisha gained more power after each death, and thus Asahi was eaten by Shisha in an attempt to protect her friend Nanashi. Mitra Buddha, an ally of the divine powers, reveals to him that Nanachi is in fact the reincarnation of the first king of the eastern kingdom of Mikaro, Akira. Now, depending on the answer you gave to Dagda, the next event will change drastically. If you choose to stay with your friends, Nanachi kills Dagda, rescues Flynn, and later on defeats bringing full peace to the world. But if you choose to join with Dagda to create a new universe, Nanachi kills all of his friends, let Flynn get brainwashed to become his close layer. Dagda revives one of his dead friends as the new goddess, Brainwatch, just like Flynn, kills everyone who opposes him and Dagda, and just like I said before, kills creating a new universe where he gains the status as the only creator god. Wow, the developers really tried to give him the worst possible life as the youngest protagonist of the mainland games. I kinda feel bad for him. Okay, let's move on. I believe in my bonds with people. Flynn is a kind person with a strong will to protect the people he cares for. After he was chosen by the gauntlet, he became a samurai to protect everyone in need. Let's see what he has been through to become the person he is right now. He lived his whole life as a casualty with his friend Isakar. A casualty is the group of people who focus on doing the hard work to make the country flow. So we might conclude that Flint's childhood wasn't the most comfortable one. Still, it was way better than Nanachi's childhood. He was forced to kill Isakar, who was suffering for being affected by the demonic gene a powerful gene written on the DNA of the Kados people which turns them into demons as a last resort defense against invasions. During one of his investigations with his team, they got caught by Yasuo Magatsuki's gas, which forced them to do weird and humiliating things. According to Jonathan, Flynn pulled off his pants and did something with his nose in front of his friend. Back to his homeland, it was revealed that the Earth Kenyans are the only reason why Mikado hasn't evolved into a futuristic civilization, restricting the lives of so many families to progress. After Walter activates the Yamato Perpetual Reactor, they were tracked to multiple dimensions where Tokyo turned into a post-apocalyptic disaster, one where it was destroyed by angels and one where demons take over the city with a chaotic will. 
Flynn eventually gained the reputation to become the savior of Tokyo, Emi Karo, which is a big responsibility to have on your back, you know? Like Nanachi is the reincarnation of Akira, Flynn is also the reincarnation of the person who gave his life to awaken Masakado to protect Tokyo. And exclusively on this game, he kills his best friend Jonathan and Walter, which gave their lives to give Merkaba and Lucifer physical bodies. The next event happened in SMT4 Apocalypse, the game I put on this list just to add more tragic events that Flynn had to suffer. The moment where Flynn was about to awaken Masakaro, the divine powers arrived to make him his god slayer. Flynn obviously refused but he had no choice after Asahi was taken as a hostage. Krishna, being inside the cosmic egg with him, fused with Flynn to transform into Vishnu Flynn, a deity with the power to surpass God. If Nanachi sides with his friends, Flynn will survive the battle. But if Nanachi sticks with Dakta, Flynn will die and Dakta will bring him back to life as Nanachi God Slayer with no own will. Is that all? Seriously, of all the protagonists of the mainline series, Flynn has to be the one who suffered the less if we don't count SFT4 Apocalypse events as canon. I'm pretty sure he won't win in this video. Tokyo died, and I was given life. Hoo hoo hoo, this guy man, this guy by just looking at him, we know he had to survive a lot of shit in order to continue being alive. He was a regular high school student who was on his way to visit his teacher in an hospital. Sadly, Destiny really wanted to fuck him. For being in the worst place, at the worst time, he testified how the world was destroyed by a cataclysm called the Conception and the creator of the new world didn't find motivation or reason inside his heart and thus he was thrown into the furthest point of the vortex world. The moment he woke up he made a blonde child who introduced a Magatama inside his body, gaining demonic powers and extraordinary strength. Since the moment he ingested that worm he turned into the Demi-Fin, half human, half demon. After escaping from the hospital where he woke up, an old man made a contract with Dante or Raido, depending on the version you are playing, to kill him. Inside the labyrinth of Amala, he met an old man in a wheelchair and a girl in a black morning garb on a stage. After a short talk, they gave to Demifin a menorah, forcing him to fight powerful fiends to get the rest of the menorahs if he wants more power. When he met his friend Isamu inside the Mantra headquarters, he got caught by Thor and eventually went to try to fight for his right to be alive. Isamu and Chiaki are complete Dutchbacks. Just like the Demifin, both ended up in the Vortex world looking for an answer of what happened and how to revert the conception. But later on, they realized they had the potential to create a new world as they say speed if they fight for it. And thus, Demifin. Isamu and Chucky became immortal enemies for the right of being the new creator of the world instead of bringing back the previous one. The only person who cares for the protagonist was his teacher, Yugo Takao. If the Demifin defeats all the fiends, Beersibab, Metatron, and reaches the deepest area of the Kalpas, he rejects his humanity and became in a true demon after receiving the old man's blessing, which all of this time was Lucifer in disguise. At the end of the Tower of Kamotsuhi, he already killed Hinkawa, Isabu, and Chiaki to obtain their keys to confront the responsible for the conception, Kagotsuhi. And considering what Demifin has done over the past tragic events I already mentioned, he kills Kamotsuhi and destroys the flow of time. If Demifin managed to defeat Lucifer, the demon who was supporting him all this time, he is reborn as a true demon and became Lucifer's secret weapon to defeat the Great Will. And yes, this ending is canon, based on SMT4 Apocalypse and 5 DLCs, where he makes an appearance before fighting Lucifer and after being reborn as the Supreme Demon, respectively. I'm not really sure if Demifin really suffered that much. I mean, being tracked to a post-apocalyptic world fucking sucks, but the majority of the tragic events he had to live through were because of his own choices to become the most powerful demon of all. Anyway, we still have two heroes left to reach a verdict. <laughs> Aleph, the protagonist with the coolest cyberpunk clothes ever made. You might hear of him before, but I can count with the fingers on my hand how many people know how miserable and sad his life was. When Okamoto found Aleph, he was fighting a demon, 
Impressed by his combat skill, he took Aleph to his gym to train him so one day he would become the champion of Valhalla, even though Aleph was feeling so bad that he forgot his own name. So Okamoto named him Hawk. One day while he was practicing inside the virtual battle, he met Stephen, who gave him the demon summoning program. Since he got in on his ARP terminal, he started to suffer multiple flashbacks about his previous life. After he became the champion of Valhalla, he met a strange girl called Hiroko, who asked him to find his missing child. This is not tragic by any means, but will be an important piece of information you are going to need later. After filing to find the missing child, he met a person from the center, which is the safest but the most boring area in Tokyo, called Seijin, which took Hawk and Hiroko back to the center. There, the center's bishop told Hawk that his name was actually Aleph. He lived on the center before he was kidnapped by Mekara, who also erased his memories. And finally, Aleph was God's chosen savior, the new messiah of Tokyo, or rather, the center. The bishop introduced Beth to Aleph, who according to him, is the perfect companion for Aleph. Considering they barely had time to meet each other, they get around very easily, until Dalet, who was known as the anti-messiah, kills Beth who gave her life to protect him. Aleph, after overpassing his friend's death, finds out that Hiroko was captain and brainwashed because of escaping from the center. He quickly rescues her thanks to a demon who fell in love with him. Seijin, after Hiroko's rescue, tells Aleph that Valhalla, the city where he lived for a short period of time, was swallowed up by a demon named Abaddon, and everyone who was living there perished in the process. Everyone who knew Aleph before becoming the champion of Valhalla died, and the person responsible behind of this slaughter was no other than the center. The guys who believe are the good people from this war against the demons. During the final raid against the center, Seijin was petrified by the four elders, which were the archangels Uriel, Raphael, and Michael, the responsible of Valhalla's slaughter, blamewashed everyone who opposed them and restricted the life of everyone who didn't live in the center. Eventually, Aleph met Lucifer, who advised him to join his chaotic lines to create a world only led by freedom and the will of the strongest. And later, Aleph reunites with Satan, who revealed his true identity, Satan, who wants to create a world where the people finally can live at peace. Here's the point where the game splits into three parts depending on the side you choose. I always go neutral first to cover the most of the content possible, so I'm going to talk about the neutral route here. Aleph and Hiroko went inside Abaddon to open a path to Lucifer's palace. To their surprise, they also found the entirety of Valhalla area inside of him and met the person who kidnapped Aleph at the beginning of the game, Mekata, who gives the most world-changing revelation seen in a video game. Aleph is an artificially created human, made by the center to become his messiah. The center, desperately looking for a person who, who can protect them, created a body expecting to God to give it a soul. That's how Aleph's body was created, as a fertilized human egg, which needed a recipient. They implanted this human egg inside the uterus of a strong woman who brought him to term. The center then kidnapped Aleph and put him in an incubator inside a lab, accelerating his growth to full adulthood in less than two days. In case you are wondering, yes, the center also took the body of Aleph to create Beth, Saiyan, Gimel, and Dalet. Now that we know Aleph has months of form, skip his whole childhood and adolescence thanks to the center, Mekata also reveals one last thing. Who is his mother? His mother, all of this time, was no other than Hiroko, his companion during a big part of the game, and the child Hiroko lost was in fact Aleph. Wow, that's so fucked up. After killing Lucifer for trying to forge a world with freedom and chaos, and Satan, who was about to purge everyone on earth with the Megiddo Ark, Aleph and Hiroko confront the creator of all. Or Yohebahe, according to Tony for you. Great video, by the way. You should watch it. Cursing Aleph to a never ending cycle of punishment for defying him. Oh my Yohebahe. They really went nasty with Aleph, without doubt. Has to be one, if not the most tragic character of the video game history, but we still have one left. Let's go. 
The protagonist who started it all. The protagonist who made this series more famous in Japan. We own a lot to him, you know. But was his life as miserable as the other protagonist? Which fact is sadder and most miserable than being the protagonist of the best game in the series? But barely any people played your game. If you have the chance to play the PS1 port of the first game, which will receive a fan translation on the next weeks, please do it. He's the only protagonist that didn't receive previous training like Flynn, Messiah power like Aleph, or being blessed by a god like Nanachi, Nahobino, or Demifin. He is just an ordinary teenager with incredible strength who was in the wrong place at the worst time. Kazuya only has his mother to help him on the day to day, and no sign of his dad. He's an expert on computers, which back then was seen as something stupid or weird to see, so he might have suffered bullying at school. During one quiet morning, received a spam message from Stephen to download the demon summoning program for the upcoming apocalypse. When he was going on his way back to home after buying pure coffee, saw how a popular monster was eating a person's neck. Because of being the only witness of the man's death, he was thrown into prison. A girl called Yuriko always tells him about how she is the perfect partner for him, destined to be together. His mother, the only person who cares about him, was eaten by a demon. And what did the law hero say to comfort him? Try not to feel bad about it. Seriously, what a fucking asshole. He fused his dog with a demon. Even though this is optional, the fact that he can do that is very fucked up. He met Aoi, the leader of the resistance, which he became part of it to stop the Japan and USA government to kill each other. They stopped them, but the USA government, controlled by Thor, launched a fucking nuke toward Japan to annihilate them and the demons. To escape alive from the nuclear missile, Aoi sacrificed herself to send him and his friends to another dimension. After they returned from the Diamond Realm, the place where Aoi teleported them, Kazuya, Love Hero, and Chaos Hero quickly find out that they are in a completely different Tokyo. One NPC later explains to them that 30 years has passed since the nuclear holocaust destroyed Tokyo, which means Kazuya was sent to a post-apocalyptic Tokyo. On the new Tokyo, he continuously hears a girl screaming for his help, causing him pain. It is revealed that the girl who was calling for his help was Aoi, who somehow reincarnated, but forgot all of her memories from her previous life. Low Hero gave his life to protect Kazuya after a strong demon unleashes a powerful attack. He and Aoi survived the Great Flood, drowning everyone in Tokyo except for them, the Ring of Gaia and the Church. After refusing to join Lao's hero, who reincarnated as the church messiah, and chaos hero's path, he, in order to achieve a world fulfilled by neutrality, kills them, and also kills Yuriko, who was a demon wishing to be with him forever. If we take SMT2's events into consideration, we can add more tragic events for his already miserable life. After the events of the first game, he and Madame founded the Valhalla area, a place where everyone can live happily without the need for the church, where he was crowned as the first champion. But every action you make has a cost. In an attempt to destroy Valhalla, the church managed to kill him and cover him as an accident inside a cave. But if you ask me, I do have an elaborate theory of what really happened to him. In SMT2 inside Valhalla's Coliseum, Aleph can find a statue of the first champion, and for some reason, if Aleph interacts with the statue, the eye will drop a tear. What if, just, what if Kazuya didn't die and instead was petrified by the Archangels? We already know that the Archangels have the power to petrify people, just as they did with Saiyan. And considering that Kazuya killed all the Archangels back in the first game, it makes sense that they came back to life and take revenge against him for what he did to them. Keep in mind that he was just an ordinary person, and neither the four Archangels were a match for his power. Of course, they were pissed about it. Oh, oh almighty God, God. Bless, bless us with, with your wisdom. wisdom. In the name of God, who dares to interrupt our daily prey? I'm Kazuya, and I'm about to finish this stupid conflict between angels and demons to save humanity once set for all. Insolent worm, do you really think we are going to let you get away with that? 
You're disrespecting the will of our Lord. Such a naive and sinful human. You don't have the power to stop us. Surrender now and we will send your soul to him. Actually, my current strength stat is at its maximum. And also some weird god called Masakado gave me his sword. So, if I have to kill all of you to continue the path I have chosen, so, be, it. This is bad. Another day blessed by our lord. Nothing can go real well. Good morning my fellow comrades. How are you feeling to- Oh shit. I gotta say, Kazuya had one of the shittiest lives ever. If you think you have a miserable and unfair life, always remember that this video game character had it worse. So, which one of these guys got the worst, most complicated and miserable life of all? To find out who is the winner of this video, we had to go through the worst events a man could possibly live. Flint killed his best friend, his two companions, and was possessed by the god? That is basically the day to day to any protagonist from this series. So, Flint is eliminated. Flint is dead! One might think that the Demifu will be the winner of this video, but I must disagree. He did throw away his humanity to become the ultimate demon, but it was his choice. He knew what he was getting into and continued that path to be more powerful. Sorry, Demifu, but you are out. The same for Nanachi, that that was controlling him like a puppet, yet he did get away from his control by joining his cause or killing him with the help of his friends. He had the option to choose, unlike the other protagonists. Nanachi is also out. Hate to break it to you, kid. You're dead. The Nahovino was, like all the protagonists from the Megaten series, dragged to a conflict where he takes a big role in it. And being the creator god who lives among the people but no one knows about his existence is quite sad, but isn't a fuck as the winner of this video. Nahovino eliminated. In the end, we only have Kazuya and Ale from the older SMT game, who would have thought choosing the winner between these two was one of the hardest things I ever done in the channel, but suffered multiple events of high caliber. And I seriously would like to give it the first place to both Kazuya and Aleph, but there has to be one winner, and that winner is... Aleph! Congratulations! Kazuya had a horrible life, way horrible than the other protagonists, but there is a specific event or rather fact that gave the win to Aleph, and that is the fact that Aleph will be cursed for the rest of the eternity. Kazuya suffered during the events of the first game, but at the end, his life was sealed after he got petrified by the Archangels and subsequently eaten by Abaddon, where the last hope to bring him back to his original form disappeared. Unlike Halep, who couldn't have the freedom to live freely, and he also was cursed by Joheba He to a cycle of never-ending suffering to him and his reincarnations. Congratulations, Aleph! Now you are the champion of the mainline SMT protagonist with the most miserable life ever! <laughs> so now I need to be like Halep. That doesn't have to be hard, right? I just have to remember everything he has been through to be like him. Well, he was a kind person, so I guess that is the easiest one. He was cursed to a never-ending cycle of suffering for the rest of the eternity Yes, let's just keep that one. Grown up inside a laboratory and especially made a contract with Dimas. Fuck. Another day, another video finished. I must say, I really had an amazing time while I was working at it. Recently, I started to feel motivated to continue making new videos for this abandoned channel. I hope I can exploit this motivation as long as possible. Like always my friend, thank you so much for watching this awesome video, and I'll see you in the next one, goodbye!